live preparing. Meeting is live on Face Facha Book. And then I got to do this little thing where I go to Facebook because I don't trust the technology or Zuckerberg. Okay, it looks like it's it looks live. I'll mute that. Cool, we're live. Hello, everyone. Happy Friday. I'm gonna we're gonna start this off. I'm gonna live pour some tea. I know this is part of what we love on this show, the live pouring of the tea. Here it's going. You can see it going right in there. I already had tea in the cup. So I guess you could argue maybe there's some sort of sleight of hand, but I promise you there's not. I'm excited about our guest today, uh, but enough about him for now. I'm going to come back to that. I'll share some of the stuff, some of the goings ons in my world right now. First of all, this, this is the second round of proofreading of going through this massive tome I've written called, Who Do You Think You Are? So that I've gone through, that's two different large parts of the book. And then I've got just this last bit, about 150 pages. And it's interesting uh, doing this, uh, I guess we'll call it proofreading, editing, whatever work. Um, one, because I really don't want to. It, it, I tend to prefer creating. I don't like having to sit and make cross the T's, dot the I's. It's a wonder I ever became a lawyer. But the other thing, as I go through, this book is very clear, or at least I'm very clear, the first section you might read and come back to, and the third section you might read and come back to, the second section is intended much more as a reference guide. And so like Strengths Finder, it's rare that you would read that whole book and read like each quality that they list. Likewise for this book. Alas, in proofreading, I don't get that choice. So I'm going through and I'm reading these sections. I'm like, oh, I'm tired of reading about ways of being. And uh, so it's really proving the point that I've made. So if you were like, not me, Adam, I'm going to read that book cover to cover because you're super smart and I love you. I appreciate the sentiment, but I don't recommend it. And uh, one of the concerns that comes up as I've been proofreading is I hope people heed that and get, don't get stopped in the second and then not get the chance to read the third part of the book. So what's going to happen is we'll release it and we'll see what happens. Maybe it Maybe it gets picked up, maybe people read it, or maybe no one reads it, or they just don't get to that. And in the second edition, we have to move that around. I'm trying to um, remind myself that nothing has to be done perfectly. There's no one and done to it. And, you know, I've, that's a bit of a perennial edge for me to step past. So, what I mean by that is, you know, in the early days of this work, I would, I would not even say anything in a conversation because I was so worried about saying the wrong thing. So I would be up here. Oh, what's the right thing to say to this person that I'm talking to at this networking event? And then the conversation's happening amongst the group. And then it kind of disperses. So I'm like, oh, thank God. I don't have to do anything. And these days I just say whatever there's there to say. So it, I no longer get stopped at that point. But now that we're at publishing this book, I noticed that's where the edge is for me now. Notice it's the same fear, right? Is that fear, I'm going to do it wrong. I'm going to blow my chance. You only get one opportunity. Make sure you do it. So it's the same underlying fear. It's just that the circumstances in which that fear shows up and stops me is different. And that tends to be the way as you're working on your fear, as you're creating transformation in your life, you step beyond your fear, you create the breakthroughs, you overcome them in this particular set of circumstances, then you step into the next arena of your life. And what do you know, it's all back. So, hey, Andrew, Andrew says, looking forward to the live today. Dave, thanks for being here today as well and for allowing us to be with your experience. Nice to see you, Andrew. Um, what else is going on? Um, there is a Facebook group I run, Bay and I co-run called The Forum. And the forum is everyone that's done any kind of work with us. So if you've done the creating clients course with me when I still ran that, if you are part of the forge or took the forge with us at some point, if you're a former client, if you're a former client at Bayes, all those people get put into this group called the forum. And we don't really do much with it. It's just sort of like right now, it's almost like a, a collection or a directory of people. And, you know, conversation certainly can start there, but um that doesn't tend to be what happens and one of the reasons for that is i don't have the capacity or the energy to really um to make that happen <laughs> i just don't have the space or the energy to really build that 
that sort of um, grassroots network, you know, make make a group a really cool place to be. But what I've discovered just recently is that um, Facebook Messenger now allows you to set up chats for the group, which is awesome because I'm always on um, group chats throughout the day. It's kind of like a little bit of how I give my brain a break. So my closest friends, the friends I've been with forever that I play Magic the Gathering with and all this stuff, we have a chat that we're always in and out of throughout the day discussing the latest news topic or whatever. And now much to my delight, the forum can have its own group chat. So I'm really excited about that. And if you're someone who's a member of the forum or you've been engaged with us in some way, go to the forum, click that link, just so you've got that chat there so you can take part of it. And it doesn't have to blow up your phone or anything like that. It just kind of sits there in the messenger app. So if you've got that, get on that. It's fun. I like chatting with people during the day. And I find that's much more accessible to me. Like I can support people in a one-off much faster way when I'm doing it like that, as opposed to um, an email or something that sits down, requires a measured response or, or stuff like that. So I like the dynamicity of, uh, of group chats. So have a sip of tea and see if there's anything else for me to share. It's not a great deal. This week, uh, last week was kind of like the re-entry. So coming back from our retreat in Costa Rica, getting on top of the mass of email and, and requests for support and all of this stuff that had kind of shown up for me. And, um, and so what happened on Saturday, I, I earmarked all of Saturday to basically do what I call a weekly review. And a weekly review is something from David Allen's methodology called Getting Things Done, GTD, if you've ever seen those, that acronym, or uh, an initialism, as Alan Partridge would say. He says, an initialism is where you take the first letter of each word. An acronym is an initialism that you can pronounce. And he gets very huffy about this. So you could not pronounce GTD. You could try to say like, G -t 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 -t, but you sound like a dork and we're not gonna do that. So anyhow, <laughs> a bit of a digression. Getting things done, one of the core parts of this approach to being productive and staying on top of all of the many things that are going on in your life that you have to keep track of is to have a process called a weekly review. And what you do at a weekly review is you set it up yourself, but the way mine looks is I go through all of the stuff on my desk, all of the papers, like these, I have, you know, these papers I just showed you over here. I've got a bill from FedEx that I have to pay because they sent me something while I was on vacation and then sent it back and charged me for that. Thanks, guys. So all the loose papers you go through on your desk, clear all that out. Then I go through every single one of my inboxes, email inbox, Facebook inbox, LinkedIn inbox, what else? Uh, Instagram inbox. I think that's the main ones. And I zero those out. So I go through and for every email, I either respond, get it handled, or I snooze it because uh, you can snooze emails now, which is great. Or I take whatever action needs to be taken. So oh, there's an outstanding invoice. I'm going to get that paid. Or uh, there's something I need to figure out here in terms of scheduling and then write the client back. Great, I'm going to do that. I'm going to send that back. And so where you end up at the end of this, it takes a while and it takes some discipline. Because when I'm sitting down to do that, I'm like, I wonder how flies land on the ceiling. And then I want to go and put my attention there. But on the other side of taking on that process, I, and I suspect you, will really find yourself in this experience like, okay, I know where everything is. I've got a hand on everything. There's nothing in my inbox for the next hour, for the next 10 minutes, whatever, demanding my attention. I'm on top of everything. And that provides me a great sense of uh, peace. My life used to be, I used to live my life in such a way that I had to do some, like I couldn't have peace unless I was doing something like that every 10 minutes. You know, I was very obsessed about clearing everything out and maintaining my inbox. And because if I didn't, I was going to fuck everything up and I couldn't rely on myself and there's no trust and blah, blah, blah. So these days I've created the breakthrough in trusting myself. I can be with it, however it's showing up, but there's still great value in taking that on. So, so the, the shift is that I used to have to do a weekly review and be productive to prove to myself that I wasn't worthless, which becomes a game you can never outrun. Now I'm clear on the value I have. I'm clear that I can handle whatever comes my way. And I'm also clear that it also serves me to get on top of everything now and then to kind of clear all that stuff out. So I finished that last week. That was what Saturday looked like. And this week has been 
bring in all the magic we created in Costa Rica back to my clients, back to my life, back to the people I'm interacting with, um, back to the stuff like that. I'm going to bring up um, a funny interaction I had on LinkedIn. I, I think I was being funny. Uh, here we go. I got that one up. Great. Um, I'll, I'm going to share that with you. And, um, and I'll share one of the things I've noticed uh, that's been present for me in my work with my clients lately, something that's really shifted in my own coaching is uh, a lot of this came from certifying, working with my mentor to certify as, as the MCC, my master coach certification, which has a lot of attention on the energy underneath the words, the, the things your client is saying or doing. And so what will happen is I'll be doing something with a client. It doesn't really matter. And I'll notice their energy will shift. Like maybe we're talking and their voice is like this. And then they'll say something like, ha, 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 ha. I'll sort of laugh like that. And I've gotten better and better at being like, hey, tell me, I'll drop whatever I was doing. And like, tell me about the energy that just showed up for you there. And one of the things I notice tends to happen is I draw attention to that. I'll ask the client that. And rather than tell me about the energy that showed up, they go back to the thing I was talking about. So I might, just to make this example really clear, I might be like, hey, I noticed that you didn't take this practice on that you said, and I'm curious how that feels for you. And they're like, ha, 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 ha. And I'll go, oh, tell me about the laughter. And they'll go, no, 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 uh, you're, you're, you're right. You're right, I didn't take on the practice. So what happens in, what's happening in that conversation is I'm presenting them with something, I'm offering them a reflection, no judgment to it. Just, hey, I noticed you didn't do the thing you said you were going to do. Some kind of energy shifts for them. And then when I ask them about what happened in that moment, instead of going there, they try to pick up the thread from where they left off. So they're basically trying to step past the energy, which is what all of us are doing constantly. And this is why transformation is so elusive is because we can't, it, it's scary to touch that thing. And so more and more of my work, it's almost becoming more and more deft and delicate where I'm not really trying to get the client somewhere. I'm instead simply bringing my curiosity in service of them developing their own curiosity about what's going on for them right now here in this particular moment. And, uh, and as they start to get present to that, they start to notice like, you know, whatever, whatever. To, oh, I, I think I got kind of scared or, oh, I, I, I felt bad. And I didn't want to feel bad. So I sort of went back to, you're right, Adam. I wasn't even telling them to do, there's nothing to be right about. I just kind of like a mirror. It's like the mirror reflecting how you look and you're like, you're right, mirror. So that's been really, um, that's been a fascinating thing for me to experience in myself. One, because of how little effort, like as you deepen in this work and you become more masterful in coaching, the less effort you're putting in and um, I'm consistently blown away by what becomes available and possible to people when they simply get more and more present to themselves. We don't have to create a whole complicated system of productivity. We don't have to create flowcharts. We don't have to figure something out. All they really need to do is to see where they actually are in the moment. And from there, that gives them access to a whole range of choices about what to do next. And if you can see, oh, I got scared in that moment, then you might take a different action rather than, oh, you're right. I just need to do the thing. Stepping over entirely past the fear, not addressing the fear at all. You know, you get the idea. Okay, let me talk about this. I'm just going to share this thing on LinkedIn with you. And then, uh, and then we're going to bring Dave on. So coaches that I'm supporting to create thriving practices. Often one of the places they get stuck is this idea of like, how, how, but it, that's not enough of it. It's more like, how, like, ah, there's some real struggling and stuff like, ah, God, how, that level of how, how do I connect with people? And that's a bit of a funny thing if you think about it, because all you do is you just go and be with people. That's really the sum total of it. But because we make this idea that I'm connecting with them and that might lead to becoming and involved in a coaching conversation with them, and then I might have to ask them to hire me and then, oh my God, I'm being salesy. All of that significance fucks everything up. And what is otherwise really simple becomes really complicated and a real mind fuck for them. And they just get completely bogged down. And so one, I can relate to all of that. Two, um, 
I just want to share this as a, an example of how we can create connection in in a myriad of ways, and there's no right for it, no right way for it to look, and it's just um, all of this can be a delight and a game if you're willing to. So, I have a social media team, and they constantly send out <laughs> invites to people on LinkedIn. And the way that their process works is they connect to someone on LinkedIn, they say, and then they send like a canned message, basically, hey, it's great to connect with you. Fine, whatever. You've probably gotten a billion of these invites. That invitation, that message they send, it's not the point and it's who cares, right? It, that's the nature of LinkedIn. So we can, we can um, vilify LinkedIn for how shallow it is, but that's how shallow life is. You've probably noticed when you go to the checkout counter at the grocery store, you go, hey, how's it going? The person tells you the answer and you've already forgotten it. I don't know, they were going the way they answered. Now I'm going to put my head back in my phone and you can do your work and then I'll leave. So LinkedIn is just one more version of this. And it'd be amazing if we were like, how's it going? The person's like, I'm really sad and this is happening in my life and there's all of this. And they just gave us all our intimacy. But that would be fucking weird because that's not what LinkedIn as a site is set up as a container for. So we kind of have to get over ourselves. Now, having said that, LinkedIn is also rife with a lot of like bullshit where people are like, hey, I'm really excited to connect to see how I can provide value to you. Great. Nice to connect with you. Great. Here's four paragraphs of my pitch. So it's just all this stuff. Me, I'm just trying to have fun. So here's an example of connecting with someone free of any agenda. And this is the path to creating prosperity of all sorts, because any prosperity as a coach begins with your ability and capacity to connect with other human beings. So I get th this guy's named Tommy. I have no idea who Tommy is. It looks like he runs a tile and stone company on Vancouver Island, the island I live on. Great. I have not, this is my team has reached out to him. Cool. So here's the message. Hi, Tommy. It's great to connect with you. And then Tommy responds. Hi, Adam. Nice to hear from you. So currently it's like our resumes are just doing this with each other. Our resumes are rubbing up against each other. And then my team responds, cheers, Tommy. Next line, how's life treating you? So the intention there is just a question that might, it might open something up or not. And Tommy responds, so far, so good. Thanks. How are you? So this is the point where I've logged into LinkedIn. All of that stuff's happening automatically. I'm not really aware of it. Now I've logged into LinkedIn and I'm like, okay, that's there. So he says, so far, so good. Thanks. How are you? My response is, so far, slightly better than you're doing, period. <laughs> Two lines, all capitals, boom. <laughs> Two more lines, all capitals, roasted. <laughs> so <laughs> poor Tommy. <laughs> There's just this dude on LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing fine. How are you doing? And then this obnoxious guy comes in and is like, I'm doing better than you. Boom, roasted. That's hilarious to me. And I can only imagine if someone sent me that out of the blue in the midst of this stuffy, fucking boring social media thing, that's going to create some kind of shift in the energy. And that's precisely what it did for me, if nothing else. Tommy responds with a laughing emoji, a thumbs up and hands clapping. And he says, much better. I need to follow LOL. And I respond saying, <laughs> just doing anything to make LinkedIn less dusty. That's the end of our conversation. That was, I don't know when, probably yesterday. I don't really have much else to bring to Tommy right now. And I don't think he's really got much else for me. But just notice that already he and I have a little bit of a richer connection than would be available if we were just sort of like, what sort of stuff do you do in business? So part of what we want to do when we're connecting with people is be willing to like take a swing, have a bit of fun, show up like you would show up at a party rather than the way you would show up because you're supposed to show up at LinkedIn. LinkedIn can be as much of a party as any of these other places, provided you're willing to be courageous. The reason we're all constantly complaining about LinkedIn being boring, or at least the reason I would typically be, maybe none of the rest of you are, is because we're not willing to bring the courage to show up against that grain. And showing up against the grain is where connection lies. That's where we can actually get to know like the weirdness of each other. Tommy knows something about me. I'm going to make some jokes and I'm going to have some fun with them. Okay. I thought that was hilarious. If you do anything like this, please share it with me because I also think it's, it's delightful to see this sort of stuff. I'm just going to read what you wrote here, Andrew, and then we're going to bring Dave on. So Andrew, you say, it's really interesting 
I can definitely see a sense of completion coming from that on a weekly basis. Andrew's talking about the weekly review. I've utilized a weekly review called General's Tent from Wake Up War Ah, Wake Up Warrior. I know that guy. He's a uh, uh, I don't know, like a, a aggressive in kind of a cool way. Anyhow, uh, the General's Tent from Wake Up Warrior for quite a few years, but my integrity with it has slipped as my schedule has been full of late. It's been a slow regression, so it's refreshing to hear your intentionality with your weekly review. I'm not militant about doing a weekly review every week. What I notice and have learned is when I feel overwhelmed and like, fuck, there's so much I have to do, that's a really good indicator that it's probably time for me to schedule and complete a weekly review. So I'm going to get back on top. It doesn't get any of this stuff done, but I, what I do is I get some altitude and a sense of what, what the field is because it's never really infinite. And once I start to do all that, I'm like, okay, got it. My email is managed. I got a sense of what's on. I've scheduled the stuff I need to do. Okay, I can take a breath. I don't like having all this stuff up here floating around in my head that I'm not really aware of. And Andrew, you also say, talking about listening underneath the words, Andrew says, I got some feedback about listening to what is happening underneath the words in my evaluation. It's a frustrating one. It really is. As sometimes I'm very attuned and other times I'm focused solely on the words. That's the artistry. You know, it's like you could think of it like in a partner dance and one partner that, well, the man or the leading partner being like, I'm frustrated because I'm trying to take the step and my partner's not doing the step and I know what the step is and she's not letting me lead her. Ah, common complaint. But what that partner is not really realizing is that they're not actually feeling the energy of their partner. And their partner might not yet be trusting them. And if I want to do like a big swing flip move and swing dancing, but my partner doesn't yet trust me and is not yet feeling in sync with me, then trying to do that is just going to create a mess. And instead the work is, oh, we actually have to sit in just this step, regardless of whether the right thing to do would be to flip them over my shoulder and, you know, do whatever those crazy swing dancers do. Okay. Oh, one last thing I have to share before we come on. I'm going to put this in the chat. Uh, Facebook is uh, telling me about community standards. I don't fucking care, Facebook. This is a movie recommendation. The movie recommendations right there in the chat. It's called Voyage of the Rock Aliens. I listened to a podcast called How Did This Get Made, which some of you may know. I love and consider myself an aficionado of good, bad movies, movies that are terrible and delightful in how terrible they are. So The Room, Birdemic, Birdemic 2, Roadhouse. Roadhouse is kind of awesome, but these are the sort of movies we're talking about. Hey, Adam, nice to see you, man. Voyage of the Rock Aliens is one hell of a mesmerizing ride. And, and uh, I almost don't want to say much more, but my friends and I got together last Friday on Zoom and I threw it on. I was like, why don't we watch a movie? And we were transfixed the whole time. Normally what we do is we have something going and we're all playing video games on our own computer. None of us were not doing it. We were just, what are we watching? What is happening? This is bizarre. So it was great. It really uh, scratched an itch for me. If you like those kind of movies, Voyage of the Rock Aliens is a great one. Adam, I agree. Roadhouse is, is amazing. Okay. Let me tell you briefly about our guests and then we'll bring them on. I'm not actually connected with Dave before this, but he's delightful and I'm excited to have him on today. Um, he's from the UK, so he's got an awesome accent. I just keep wanting to hear him uh, say stuff as Alan Partridge, which many of you know is my all time favorite uh, TV character. And, um, and Dave reached out when I said, who wants to come on? And oh, there's Grimby, I'm just gonna close that door, ensure confidentiality, but Grimby will hear part of this conversation. So Dave, let's get your camera on. Let's get your audio on. Let's let's talk. Hello. Hello. I'm, I'm just I'm just going and looking at Voyage of the Rock Aliens on Google. Oh, it's a trip. He is Adora. Yeah. Do you do you know who a, that was? I didn't even know bit, who that was. I recognise her from from kind of like 1980s films, and I'm I'm just yes. gonna, I have to dive in at some point and just look at her past history. And there's Michael Berryman, who was in I think he was in uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And yes, that's that right. The guy COVID. with the uh, yeah, yeah dome the head and like big sullen black eyes. That's oh. right. 
And then you've got um, um, Jermaine Jackson. Jermaine the, Jackson. So it's incredible. And Pia Zadora is delightful. She's very charismatic in the movie, super cute. Anyhow, it's nuts. Oh. <laughs> it's crazy. So well, that's, yeah, that's, that's my weekend true. sorted. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Watching it and then Wikipedia and Googling for the next uh, however long. Yeah. How did you first come aware of me, Dave, before we start? I know Heather Eggington, who oh, is yes. in the Lonely Coach community. And she flagged you up because you did some, you did a couple of lives, I think, a couple of live Zooms in her group. And she she flagged you up there and I went, ooh, you know, she's putting putting you in the group. You must be all right. And I Heather literally lives, she lives within two miles of where I am, which oh, is cool. quite strange. And we we connected last year on at the Litvin Intensive and we got chatting and realized that we lived like that far apart. Um and you came and did a, a live in the group, which I, I admit openly that I didn't actually get to the initial live, which was frustrating because I had I just had a night where I was exhausted and I was just like, no, he looks cool, but I can't do it. <laughs> and so I've, I've kind of been following your stuff from, from then on. So I went and clicked follow on Facebook and just did a little bit of stalking. And then when you put that message out and said, who wants to, who wants to talk? I'm kind of like, me, uh-huh. because you don't turn down an opportunity to have a conversation with someone. Well, you don't, at least. Simple. Well, well, yeah. I mean, and 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 you know that that kind of that for me that's twenty twenty two. Twenty 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 one was just a twenty twenty was a bit bleh. And I just for me twenty twenty two has been what can I experience which I haven't experienced before. Lovely. You know, where can I stretch where where I haven't stretched before? And and there's so many things I'm looking at and going, oh, I've not done that before. Why mm. not? Because I've told myself that I can't do it okay yeah. have you done it no right let's try it so let's for me it's just it about yeah let's it, it is it is the play thing as i said before you went live it's you know it's, let's play so cool. yeah that's kind of how i heard about you love it uh hello lynn lynn says hi to both of us hello lynn hey lynn uh well let's dive in shall we so there may be a few points you may see me take some notes and there may be a few points where i kind of pause us to talk to people at large, to let them know, here's what's going on and here's what I'm noticing or anything like that. Um, so having said all that, what would you like to take a look at in this conversation? I'm trying to remember now what I typed <laughs> on the job form. You know, you fill those things out and then you go, what was it I actually said? I think, I think it was something around being that I talked about. Um, I've got the notes if you'd like, but I also yeah. want to invite, you know, if there's something yeah. else present for you in this moment, by all means, you can bring that, but I'll, I'll just read you what you wrote. You wrote being and living from the heart. That was it. That was it. Yeah. 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 I, I spend time here. Lots and lots of time here. And uh-huh. it's, it's a real battle sometimes for me to go let's go somewhere else. Mm. And, and, and I think in my experience anyway, there's, there's a lot more presence in here than there is in here. And for me, again, 2022 is about experience, but it's also about presence. Okay. Because I know that that presence can, can help me be a better human. It can help me be a better father, it can help me be a better coach. And and it was it, it was really it was last year when um, I started to, to kind of look at that headspace to heart space stuff, or as um, David Teleklaus calls it, the DTK calls it, the eighteen inch drop, and that that resonated with me because it was like that that's part of the journey I'm on is to, is to feel more. So it, it's for me now it's about feeling more. Okay. Um, Andrew has an important question. So he Mm. says, which is, are you drinking tea or coffee? Uh, Tea. Great. And what kind of tea? It is, um, do you know, it might be Tetley, which is. Which would be orange Pico? uh, Yeah, but it's decaf because I I became decaffeinated about 10 years ago. So I stopped drinking caffeinated coffee because me caffeinated is just too lively. Um, And I I went to decaf tea as well about 12 months ago but then realized and my mom my mom had been giving me decaf tea for about two years before hadn't told me thanks mom and with milk or without with milk good man okay excellent 
Andrew, I hope that satisfied your that's, curiosity. That, that's that's just, the most important question ever. Andrew's like, why am I always running out of time on coaching calls? <laughs> Only talk about tea for 30 minutes. I don't understand. Anyway. <laughs> okay, so living from the heart <sighs> makes you a better human father coach. Was there more? Yeah. It, it allows me to, to access things which I've been reluctant to access. Okay. Um, and, and what I, I, what specifically kind of popped into my memory at the moment is, um, I, we, we talked, we talked before, before we went on live. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's okay. That's cool. This is, this is obviously real life stuff. It's, it's going on in the moment. Um, we talked about, well, I talked about anger and you know anger as a companion for since my teenage years now you, you can't tell sitting down i'm i'm six foot one i've been six foot one probably since about 12 13 years old and and that can be quite imposing as a teenager when when you lose your temper but i had um a friend at school who who was abducted and murdered who was in mm. the same year as me and wow. that very very small village in in north worcestershire so about 15 miles outside of birmingham and it, and it had a whole impact on the community very very small community and i know that i've taken that and i've gone yes that thing happened up here yes it happened this happened at school etc cetera, etc cetera, but never really kind of taken it here i've never really given myself the the permission i suppose to feel it and I spoke to my dad about this recently and, and my, my dad said, well, he, he said, you, you were unlucky. You know, you, you can't, you can't account for those things. These things happen. And it happened at a time when you were very, you were going between that teenager, child, almost suddenly forced into being an adult. And it's like, you know, the universe going, you're now an adult. You look like an adult. You're going to have to behave like an adult. And we, we're going to give you no quarter at all. And, and that, that happened. And I'll, I'll, stick that there for the moment because i'm sure we're going to come back to that and then when i was 20 i had a, a friend called ollie who was at university he just started a university in essex lived very very local to me just found him as a mate just then drinking in the pub really really good friend and he went back to university in the january of 1994 and he, he died and you've got this experience with with stuart really tragic experience of him being abducted and murdered and then you know feeling feeling that or not feeling that and then at 21 2021 somebody who who very very close to could see me being you know being life mates dies as well and suddenly there's just this hop get over the first maybe to the second happens again it's like when when does this ever kind of end and I think there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff which and I can feel it, feel it in my voice. I can kind of feel it just just there. What are you feeling? It's on the edge of emotion. It's just on on the edge of yeah. It's, what is the emotion? I'm trying to push it up here. Uh, what's the emotion? Oh, oh. it feels nervous. Mm. Yeah, I can feel my heart rate up. Can feel. Hmm. It's almost like my body saying, "Fuck off! You're not going there. <laughs> I don't want you to go there." Um, well, why should we go there? I mean, I I know we have all this conversation about should, but I mean, I'm using that word intentionally, like, mm. okay, I get all of this stuff in the past. And it sounds like you've had a really good reason to learn yeah. to put this stuff into your head and not to go there. So why, what for go there then? A really good question. So the, the, while you're thinking with that, oh, I'm sorry, were you just about to speak? I was just going to say the word which popped into my head was complete. To kind of complete it. Okay. Let me just yeah, speak to everyone yeah. else for a mm. second. So like where we're at right now, you can probably feel like Dave's got some stuff and he's conscious of it and he can see like how he got here. 
And this is the point where we're um, sort of straddling the line of what would be a therapeutic conversation as opposed to a coaching conversation. So in a therapeutic conversation, we just be like, great, let's go into the emotion. Let's talk about that. Let's process all that. But in coaching, we're supporting someone to get to the place of their choosing. Here's where I am and here's where I want to be. A life by your design because you said so. Where do you want to get to? We don't have any idea where Dave wants to get to. We just know there's a thing here, but what for? Sort of like if you went into the world and you're like, ah, fuck, a wall. Help me scale the wall. But it's like, okay, but why? What about this wall is worth scaling? Why would we take this on? So I'm not being heartless. I can really get over there with Dave, but I'm also not getting drawn into the allure of, ooh, juicy emotionality. Let's just take that on because to do so would be to step into a more of a therapeutic role. And my stand for Dave is for him to have the life that he wants, as opposed to the life he probably thinks he should come up with and doing the work he thinks he needs to do because he will be better for it. So Dave, you probably heard all of that. I didn't tell you to put your fingers in your ears. So what for address any of this stuff? Because currently, it doesn't seem like a very good reason. Seems like it's been a pretty good call to <laughs> keep it all up here. Yeah, yeah. Compartmentalize that. Keep it yeah. out of the way. Don't, don't let it get in the way. Be productive. Get life done. Yeah. Have the impact you're committed to having. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I, can't, I can't complain about the quality of my life. You know, I've... I've... I wouldn't listen anyhow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, one one of the things which is is interesting, and, and aside from this, is um, that I was born with spina bifida, and have a club. What foot. is that one? So spina bifida is where the first twelve weeks of gestation that the the spine forms and all the tubes kind of come in and all the bits and pieces go in place. And I had an open area which didn't form properly, so they had to do yeah. surgery when I was four. Okay. Um, so I did surgery when I was four, both on that and both on my club foot. So I. I have a back, which is a bit all over the place, and I have some muscle changes on the, the left side, and I have a foot which looks like it should be on a on a, a an eagle, not on a human. Um, and I've had ulcers on my feet and various other things. And so there's there's kind of that, I suppose that's been going on as well. And and with that, I you know, there was something actually, just something which has popped into my head. You when you did the video with the 4PC one, which I watched earlier you said something very key which resonated which was you talked about your parents and you said you know had a, had a great childhood and I had a great childhood I had an absolutely amazing childhood in a, in a in a really nice village where I could go out and be safe absolutely safe and so I yeah so so why would I want to go back and explore any of that stuff was, was kind of the question I realized I'm just going off pace a little bit um so why, why go back? Well, I want to be clear. I'm actually asking yeah. a slightly different question from the one you're okay. engaged yeah. with. Um, they're very similar. Mm. Why would I want to go back? Kind of starts from the premise, almost. There's almost like this implied, we should go back, therefore why? But I'm actually asking you slightly different. And it's a bit on me because I, I wasn't super clear of this. What do you want, Dave? I get the idea of living from your heart, but what for? What is it you're trying to create in your life that you want that you think living more from your heart would actually enable? Thank you. Good. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. That mm -hmm. makes a huge difference. Oh, this is the point where I wish I could give you a beautifully curated answer, but there isn't one. Um, mm. Well, tell me more about that. Like there isn't one, what, what's your experience? <laughs> when I, when I started coaching three years ago, um, my, my coaching was very much around, let's talk about your business, healthcare business coaching or marketing coaching or Mine too. You know, stuff, stuff, which I, I knew stuff which I was, was I'd, I'd done because I'd run my own healthcare business for, for eight years. So I'd had to do the marketing and I'd, I'd had to do that kind of stuff. And, and I, I started doing video, which put me in front of people and people went, oh, he's doing video. Maybe he should come and speak on, on a stage or, or we could ask him to speak because he's obviously got some experience. And 
probably over the last 12 months of my coaching, the biggest shift for me has gone from business and marketing to people, to, to the person at the center of that business. And in, now thinking about it, it makes perfect sense. You know, the, the person at the center of the business will then lead into everything else. You work with that person first. But it's been a huge shift for me down the route of mindfulness and I touched before on, on response flexibility, which I found out, worked out in 2015. When, when Dave, my I'm going to interrupt you. Mm, sorry. What's yeah. important about what you're telling me? That I'm changing and developing and it feels, I feel lost in it. Okay. And what does that have to do with um, what you want or not being clear on what you want? Because at 48 years old, I should know exactly what I want. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So there's like a bit of judgment about not mm. being clear in the moment of what you want. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, I, I notice I can't totally tell if it is a yeah for you or if you're just agreeing with me. So I really want to invite you. Is that no. what that is? Because I'm not asking from being right over here. I'm genuinely curious with you. Is that what it feels like? Say it again for me. Yeah. So I think what I heard you say is that you've got some judgment about not, I'm 48. I should know what I want. Yes. Yes. Got it. How come? Good question. Um, just being that, a dumb, curious child over here. No, 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 no. It's a beautiful question because it, chal it, challenges, it challenges every preconception I probably have. Um, my dad is a very successful business and has been for, for many, many years. Started companies, ran them very, very successfully, did very well from them. Um, I've got friends who are very successful people and have done very, very well in, in their fields. I look at it and go, why have I not done that? Why have I not got to that point where I've got that success now? And, and, and I, I, feel, I feel frustration with that. Um, and what does this have to do with why you should know? So just to be clear, yeah. I want to okay. be clear, I'm not challenging you saying I should know what I want at 48. I am inviting that belief as opposed to challenging it. So what I'm curious about is, great, tell me more. Like why at 48 should you, I'm, I want to invite you to hold that judgment with reverence as opposed to like more judgment. I think I should already know what I'm doing at 48. And I think it's wrong that I think I should already know. That just, <laughs> we're in a dog pile. Yeah. So I'm actually inviting you, Dave, like, great, let's talk about that. Why should you already know? Like, tell me the story that has you sort of feel like, fuck, I should already know. That's, that's the point where there probably isn't a story. It probably just is something which I've made up in my head. Almost certainly, because no yeah. child comes onto this planet and is like, great, 48 is when I got to know. So we're pretty clear there's a story. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not... I'm not looking for like the cosmic reality reality. I'm looking for subjectively. What's this, the internal story, the beliefs, you know, et cetera, that has you in that kind of fuck I should, or I shouldn't have this as a problem. I think I'm on my fourth career, if not mm -hmm. my fifth, um, from computing late teens, caring and nursing podiatry now coaching it feels like i get to a point and then go nah and mm. then jump to something else and what the question popped into my head then is well what why is that why 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 not be satisfied maybe is the right or wrong word but why not be satisfied with where i am and work and grow that what why, why jump somewhere else is it helpful for you to ask that question? No. Okay. It's, it's, it's not because each of those things that I've done is not something exclusive, which doesn't lean into the other things. I said before my, my first job in a nursing home, wiping people's bottoms, 
I still reference that now as a, as a strong and powerful part of my experience and my history, because that taught me about people. That taught me how to work and serve people. The same with nursing, the, the same with podiatry, the same with running a business. It's, it's all part of the same thing. What's the, um, if we were to sort of put a headline at the conversation you're in with yourself right now, what, what would that headline be? What would that headline be? <laughs> Dave makes up story to avoid getting on with his life. <laughs> hmm. And tell me about the laughter there. <laughs> the, <clears throat> I'm laughing. I'm laughing because it feels it feels true. <laughs> and I'm laughing because it's it's crazily, crazily obvious in a way that and, and going back to the question about revisiting that past and, and looking at that is why look in that direction? Why look that way instead of looking that way? What is that way? That way is not clear. And that and that feels another frustration as well. And, and maybe that that tips into the <clears throat> being 48 should know my direction. It, it feels like it feels like and I'm smiling about it because it 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 feels like there's a huge amount of faith and trust needed in order to just go with it and just see what happens. Well, I have a hunch. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. More no. There? I was, I was, I was, I think I was just making a noise. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let me speak to our audience first and then I'm going to come back. Okay. I've got a hunch. So remember in what, makes a coaching conversation a coaching conversation is a few ingredients the first ingredient is where is this person right now in their life if we don't know that it's sort of like looking at a map but not knowing that you are here place you're just like okay there's a map it's complex but i don't know what to do with it because i don't know where i am so we need to know where someone's situated the second part we need is where do they want to be the third part is what's the gap between where they are and where they want to be until we know the thing in the way we don't have much to do. And once we have all three of those ingredients, then we can coach to close the gap. So to be clear with Dave, we're pretty clear on where he's at. We kind of, we have a gap. We don't know if it's the gap, but we know that he's distinguished like, oh, I don't live from my heart enough. So that would be an example of a gap. But that's sort of like, if I took you to my garage, I'm like, look, the car's broken. We got to fix it. And then you were like, yeah, but why? Well, I don't know. It's just, it's broken. What do you do with a broken engine? You got to fix it. We only fix it if we need that engine fixed to get to somewhere we want to go. So that's kind of the living from his heart thing for Dave is that, yeah, we could put our attention there, but until we really know what for, until we have a place to go, we don't know if that is the gap in particular to address and taking that work on absent where Dave wants to get starts to become a bit of a grind. Just like if you're like, I got to fix my car engine because that's what you have to do with a car engine. That's not really a very motivating factor. You're going to get to the point where you're like, fuck this. It's boring fixing a car engine. It's confusing. and I don't want to do it anymore. And I don't have a reason to other than that I should. Fuck it. I'll go play video games. So that's the thing we're at risk at. It's compelling to Dave that he's got a broken car engine but we don't yet have something in the future to go towards that we're after. So that's the first part. We've got those ingredients we need to get. And typically we wouldn't really start to coach until we have all those. But what I notice is happening for Dave is that as we start to look at what do you want, he's getting caught. So we kind of have to zoom that becomes our coaching. So if normally we're getting these things and then we coach in this instant, we're like, okay, let's get that first thing. Great. Let's get the, oh, this is where we're stuck. So we have to zoom into this. And now the conversation becomes about looking with Dave at what he wants and what might be in the way, the gap of getting what he wants. So it becomes a microcosm. Where Dave is, is unaware of what he wants. Where Dave wants to be is clear on what he wants. And now we're kind of exploring the gap. And once we have all those three things, we could zoom back out and then we could go to the bigger conversation. It's possible this entire conversation with Dave is just going to be looking at what's in the way of him determining what he wants. Does that all make sense, Dave? Yes. Cool. Here's what I heard you say when I asked you about like, you know, you were like, oh, you talked about this way and you gestured to the le your left. And then you talked about that way and you gestured in front of you. 
And I asked you, what is that way? And you started to talk about your experience of that way. But I want to be clear when you're gesturing in front of you, does, do you mean that way as in like what I want to create, like what I want to go towards? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's, great. That's yeah. That's my, my direction that way. Got it. And when you talk about the experience of like, what do I want to get? I heard you say it's not clear. It feels murky. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So tell me about the experience of being in that lack of clarity. How is that for you? It's agonizing in some ways. Mm. It, tell me it's, more. It's, it's like I feel, a dis I feel like I'm a disappointment in some respects. Um, and and the and, and this is the, the person who's popped into my head is my dad and, and my, I love my dad he's 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 an awesome human being and he never he never turns around and says you're a disappointment ever but there's that feeling that maybe I'm not where okay this this yeah here we go that where other people think I should be there we go that's that's quite mm. that feel that feels quite quite potent um and back to that point about faith, it is looking around maybe and let's get my words right on this, looking around and, and taking that information from other people as to help with my compass and my direction instead of just going, what about this compass and this direction? Well, here's what I noticed. Thanks for sharing all that, first of mm -hmm. all. I see you looking. Is there is there more? No, to no. Before? I just okay. I just <laughs> I have just just for reference. I, I have pictures on the wall up here, um, and and one one of them's of me, which a friend of mine drew for me. So I keep looking up and seeing me, and it's it's always a bit unnerving. So I'm just looking. I'm looking at that wall. There's some memories up there as well. So probably why. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, feel free to continue doing that if it's true. Mm. So being with this lack of clarity and not knowing what you actually want is agonizing. It leaves you feeling like a bit of a disappointment mm. and kind of confronts you with this idea, like I'm not where other people feel I should be. I should be somewhere else. That I don't know what. Now, what I noticed happened is as you were sitting and being with the experience of not knowing what you wanted, you started to morph over into solving it and the answer to that was have faith and then you could blah, 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 blah. Did I catch that? Right. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, check my feet. Is that about right? Yeah. Yeah. So it almost occurs like you can kind of be with this agonizing, fuck, I'm a disappointment. Like, I don't know what I want. I should already know what it is, you know, all of that sort of stuff. And then there's like a threshold you reach before you're like, faith. That's the answer. I will take faith. Then I'll figure out what I want. <laughs> then I don't have to be in this awkward, yeah. crappy, terrible, agonizing feeling. Yeah. Escape. That escape it, yeah. Escape from that feeling. Right. Don't deal with it. Push it, push it aside and go, Oh, this is the solution. This is what I'll focus on. Uh -huh. and, and, and then sit there for a while with a big smug grin on my face and go, Oh, I've solved the problem. But I haven't really solved the problem. Well, tell me about, so like the, it sounds like given that there's this experience of life where you find yourself, you don't know what you want. That feels in itself agonizing, disappointing, like it, it's evidence that you're not where you should be. Mm -hmm. And as I'm taking out where other people feel you should be, and just it's evidence on some level of where you're not where you should be, given that that is the experience of being there. What are the things you do to alleviate that problem? So I heard you say you escape it. What else do you do? Procrastinate. Okay. Um, make myself busy just on, on anything. Uh-huh. <laughs> Work through five series of Breaking Bad. Good show. <laughs> Which, love yeah, it. Yeah, I love it. And that's why, why I'm working through it. Uh -huh. Um get distracted mm -hmm. what do you tend to get distracted by <laughs> i like i like i like my books 
okay. do like my books. And, you know, if you ask me what percentage of those I've read in any great detail, the answer would be probably 20%, maybe 25%. And that's not to say that the ones I've read aren't particularly good because they are. But I look and find something and go, oh, that's interesting. Let me find out more about that. And, and maybe the phrase which might work for this popped in my head is maybe there's a lack of discernment there or maybe there's a lack of what's the word i'm looking for um not being able to resist temptation maybe is, is a good way to describe that instead of just going actually hang on a minute do i need that what what have i got already which i can i can sit and work with are you solving the problem of going and reading books now is that what's happening I still have books. I <laughs> still have lots of books. Um, I'm solving it by by reading them and by spending time with them, and then hopefully taking action. And I say hopefully because that's that's what I hope I'm doing. Well, let me be a little more clear. Mm. Problem is you don't know what you want, and that's a problem because being with that is agonizing, disappointing, leaves you feeling like you're not where you want to be. You're let down. Whatever your words, you can fill those in. The solution, the way of dealing with that is to escape from it, solve it, faith, trust, I need to do this, whatever, to procrastinate, to get busy, binge on TV, distract yourself with personal development books. Then as you were describing that, I heard like you were kind of like, I think maybe the problem is I need to be better at discerning. So it sounded like you had kind of jumped into this new conversation where you're like, how could I not have reading books be the problem for me that it is? And I'm asking, is that, did I hear right? Yeah. Or were you doing something different? Just, you said something on one of your podcasts and this, this <laughs> hard to be someone as hard to be with someone as they struggle. And I feel at the moment what it feels like is it's hard to be with myself when I'm struggling. Yeah. Well, I really get that. Like mm, all yeah. of this, I can feel there's sort of like, fuck, I shouldn't be here. Mm. And then it's interesting because I can feel the significance you have about this. Over here, I'm like, this sounds like a perfect system. Like if you were raised by a really driven man, who loved you dearly and was like, the way to make your way in this world is through drive and performance and productivity and make sure you get everything done. It might at least somewhat on the right path of how you might've been raised. Okay, great. Mm. So if that was the highest, you know, the hallmark, the highest, that's how you get love. That's how you do good in this world. That's how you have value. Then Knowing what you want to do becomes secondary to doing whatever there is to do. Does that sound at least accurate? Mm, yeah. So I'm hearing, and I'm noticing just in your processing of this, a lot of like, we start to like come closer I, up here where I'm pointing. This is where that thing is that we don't want to be with the agonizing, disappointing feeling, right? Mm -hmm. As we start to come closer to it, there's this pull back towards like, oh, maybe this is how I could solve it. And then we start to get closer to it. And then we come back to this is how I could solve that. Mm. Can you feel what I'm reflecting? Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, look, a solution. Yeah. But and it's not, I got to say, it's Dave. Not. <laughs> yeah, but I'm willing to bet good <clears throat> money that the solutions you come up with are pretty fucking great. Like, I imagine you don't come up with harebrained solutions. There's a lot of truth to them. There's a lot of brilliance inherent in them. It's not that they're quote unquote, bad solutions, it's that ultimately they move you away from the very thing in your life that there is to be with. Yeah. Three years ago, when I sold my podiatry practice, there was, yes, there was the drive to, to not want to be there and have fun. Absolutely. Uh -huh. And I love my patients and I'll put it out there that I'm a fucking good podiatrist. There's a master's I degree bet. on the wall up there, which <clears throat> in biomechanics, I just wasn't having fun. But but part of that was I'd worked for 
that was 2018. So the last, the, the previous 11 years doing pretty stupid hours. And, and at one point between 2012 and 2015, when, when I was doing the master's, it was seven day weeks. It was master's degree, manager on the NHS, running my own business. And I've got three kids, got, you know, my wife, the situation we're at the moment with the split, um, <clears throat> dogs, chickens, all, all kinds of stuff going on. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I got to 2018 and it was like, I, I can't keep living like that. And part of me selling the business was, was to be more around my family, was to, was to be present for them. And when you, when you kind of reflected back to me, the, I suppose the story of my dad and how hard he worked, he, he's 76 and in some ways he's still working now and, and he loves it. That, that's, his, that's his jam, you know, he really enjoys it. And I don't, I don't deny him that because that, that's what keeps him, keeps him happy and allows him to annoy my mom, which I think is another of his, his challenges in life, which he succeeds in. But I realized that wasn't the path that I wanted to take. And I wasn't, you know, in 2018, my, my daughter was 14. What's the path you want to take? The path I want to take is, is to be more present for my kids. That's, that's one thing, which is, is, is more of a challenge now for sure. Give me an example um, of what that might look like. How would I know you were being more present with your kids? Just being able to say to them, come on, let's go and do something. And I am with you here in this moment. I'm not thinking about work. I'm not thinking about developing me. I'm not, I'm not thinking about all the things that I believe I should be doing. What would you go do with them? Give me an example. <sighs> got half term coming up soon. We're, we're going to go and do indoor golf something completely different to what we would do in the house and and two of them are teenagers one's a preteen they quite happily sit and play devices all day and, and read and, and, and work on school stuff and it's just let's take from that and go somewhere else Anyways. let's say that you got a hold of this this thing that has you distracted diffuse doing a million things procrastinating whatever mm. and that is no longer ever present I don't know how that looks. I have no idea how you got there, but let's imagine that was there such that now you're able to be present with your children in a way that present with your children in your own life in a way that is mind blowing, completely different. What's like some of the crazy stuff in this new world we're creating that you would be doing with your children, stuff that probably just isn't even available right now. Me and my youngest would be going to E3 because he loves computer mm. games. Over in the States, right? Over in the States, yeah. It's California, so physically going to E3 and then visiting Yosemite. Mm, okay. Give me a We'd couple be, other things. Oh, my daughter loves, absolutely loves, she, she deputy stage managers at a school, plays. She loves that kind of thing. I'd be going to plays with her. We'd mm. be experiencing stuff in the West End, we'd experience stuff on Broadway, just, just going and doing those things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my middle lad's probably more of a, he, he's he's more of a closed book, but mm -hmm. he's he's a Minecraft nut. So getting him to teach me how to play Minecraft so I don't fail every time I every time I switch it on. <laughs> cool. And Minecraft, just, and just like being that. patient, patient for them as well. What would it be like to be patient a, with yourself, pattern. Dave? <laughs> Oh, that's a question. Where do you think we would see something different in your life if you were able to be as patient with yourself as you wished you could be with your kids? Clarity and as you're committed to being with your kids. Clarity and direction. What would I see you doing? What would I notice differently two years hence? You would see me in a coffee shop local to you because I've been speaking somewhere in Canada. What You'd would seen, be different about your speaking? Oh, it would be it would be so open. Mm. It would be so honest. Which which seems strange because I feel that when I speak when I do speak on stage I feel that I'm honest but maybe I'm not and probably in fact not maybe I'm definitely not I'm not as honest and authentic and open as I could be what did you touch in that moment 
Like I felt you shift when you said I would, it would be so open. What, what did you get in touch with in that moment? <laughs> a little bit of frustration. With yourself? Bit, I, I, yeah, I think I'm doing this and obviously I'm not. Um, and a little bit of excitement mm. as well. How do you I think you'd, to, you'll go ahead, please. I said, I said, I said to my daughter um, last year, with all the stuff we're going through, I said, um, I said, are you ready to see a different version of, of me? And she looked at me and she went, yeah, I am. And I, and I think they're, they're starting to see that. Um, when, when my wife threw me out in 2015, they had a, a memory of a very angry dad who short tempered would, would shout, would kick and break things and then withdraw for, for weeks at a time. And I still remember my kids saying to me a couple of years into the, the personal development, the books and, and all the work saying, we, we like this version of daddy. And yeah, that, that for me, that, that feels just now I can, I can, I can feel that it was, it was like the, the little bit of me, which goes, well, why didn't I do that before? And let's let that go. It, it's like, I did it. And my kids saw that difference. And I would wish for them to see more of that difference. In what fact, I'd wish, they... I'd wish for them to see, I'd wish for me to see more of that difference. Mm. So how would you experience yourself differently on the other side of this? Oh. Oh, gosh, I can use a cheesy phrase, lightness. Mm. Just, just lightness. Um, amusement, fun, play. Mm. Yeah. What, what, when you're playing, you know, when you're engaged with just your playful self, what, what kind of mischief do you get up to? <laughs> Tell jokes. Mm -hmm. Monty Python style humor. Right. I was imagining like a whoopee cushion showing up on my chair. Oh, oh yeah. Maybe something slightly yeah. more clever than that, but that idea. Yeah. yeah. Just, just, just something which gets people back here and takes them away from whatever shit they've got going on in their head just mm. for that moment just long enough just the, back to the response flexibility the, the the stimulus and response thing you know you you've got all this stuff going on in your head you, you feel like you've just got to get stuck in with that what can i do in the middle of this which is just going to distract you long enough so that though that you get a moment of peace more lightness, more amusement, more play. What would we notice as far as your sadness and your anger is concerned? My anger doesn't show up outwardly much now at all. Um, it, it, it shows up. I, I get angry. I mean, I mean, who doesn't, you know, I get, I, I, I experience anger, but it, but it's, it's the difference between me saying I am angry and I experience anger um what shows up for me now in that is amusement what's going to show up more in the future for me is i'm going to say a narration of where i am just just a true sort of this is what i'm feeling at the moment this is this is how i'm feeling and be able to talk about that in in a way which the word diffuses comes to mind maybe that's the right word um and also a massive acceptance of, of the fact that when anger has been around in the past, that was, that was the only way which I could, I could work with it at the time. I didn't know any better. And, and the time when I did know better was the time that I knew, knew better. It wasn't going to happen any sooner. It wasn't going to happen any later. It happened when it did because it did. So what would it look like to bring total acceptance to your anger? Like what would we notice when you're angry? You wouldn't. <laughs> Interesting. How come? That's a good question. I'm just, let's think about when, when I, when I used to display anger before it was, it was loud. It was bangy. It was things getting broken. Doors are always a speciality. Um, many, many doors, a speciality. But it was always that outward thing with, with me ranting and raving and making noise and just wanting to be seen. Um, anger in the future is, 
it's me being able to say, you know, I, I feel anger at this and, and this is why. Here's maybe a way we can do about it. Or can we talk about this? Or, or is there another way through this? Or, or I'm not scared of losing my temper. Mm -hmm. Because that was always something very, very strong for me. That's why I used to withdraw is I'd, I'd, I'd lose my temper. I'd end up with a, with a sore throat and a hoarse voice from, from shouting. And then, then I'd withdraw because I was so scared that anything would just send me back down that road. It felt like some sadness showed up for you in that moment. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what that was? Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about that. Just all, all, the, all the times where all the times where I, I went off at something which wasn't important for, for probably no gain really in the moment, apart from just to, just to be heard. Mm. And it, the, that feels a bit like, it feels a bit like a waste. It feels a bit, it feels a bit like a, it feels, it, it, it feels like my kids are going to be having therapy for the rest of their lives in some ways, because I, my, my, my fear about that is, well, what was the effect on them when they were younger? And the sadness around that. Yeah. Every parent's heartbreak. Yeah. 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 You know, I don't want to ever be blamed for, for the, the struggles of my children. And the reality is that that is, you know, they're, they're going to be affected by who, who I was at that time and how I behaved. Yeah. Well, there's blame and then there's being able to be responsible. Yeah. And those are separate. And the other thing I've noticed is no one gets out of childhood unfucked. <laughs> childhood fucks us because that's just the way it is, right? You can have the most loving, kindest parents in the world. And then you come into the world that's without any preparation for nasty people because you were raised with men you're like fuck you mom and dad you coddled me or you can have really mean parents and you have no way to receive love from them or whatever you know there's no right way to do any of this so i just want to touch on one last thing or check in you you know we were i was asking you like what would it look like to have total acceptance of your anger and i heard you say like i wouldn't be afraid of myself ultimately like you'd really trust yourself what would it like, what would it be like? Like, what would your experience of life be like from that place of just totally trusting yourself? The phrase I'd stop hiding comes to mind. Mm. And then the other thing which comes to mind is, is, is Marion Williamson's quote about, you know, we're not afraid of our darkness, we're afraid of our light. And I'm not even going to try and say that whole quote because it's huge, but. It also I, would be a distraction from what I'm asking yeah, you. It would yeah. be telling me about Marianne Williamson stuff. So I want to know about you. So got it. There's the quote, but then tell me more about you trusting yourself. You'd see more of me mm. and not just see more of me as in I'd be speaking and I'd be helping and I'd be out there serving people. You'd see more of me mm. what would i get to to be with At the base level someone who likes to drink tea and makes you laugh mm. and is just delightful i'm going to use your word delightful to be around mm -hmm. somebody who who when you're in their presence will leave you feeling a different person after that conversation so I already get that stuff. And I noticed that's about my experience. I'm wondering what would I get to see more of, of you? That's a very good question.
The answer at the moment is I'm not entirely sure. Thanks for knowing that. There's a tinge of sadness and frustration which comes with that, and and that's, yeah. Would I get and to be I'm, with and, more and of was, your sadness I'm, and frustration? I was I was going to jump into solution, and I'm not. Would I get to experience and be with more of your sadness and frustration? In addition to all that other stuff that you talked about? <laughs> yeah. Mm. You wouldn't just get the jokey, Dave tells jokes, avoids people by telling jokes about himself and making himself funny. You would get, yeah. Mm. Much fuller experience. Get everything. Uh -huh. huh. Well, let me read back what you said. And then I just want to check in and see where you're left in this moment, okay? So where we arrived, how we got here was looking at like, what do you want? And you're like, ah, I don't, I don't have that readily available. And that leaves me feeling agonized, disappointed. I'm not where I ought to be. And from there, you try to escape that place, solve it, fix it, overcome it, distract yourself from it. And so instead we were talking about like, well, what if you didn't have to do that? You know, what if you could just be with that? And you said, well, I'd be way more present. I'd be way more present with my kids. I'd do things like take my, my kid to E3 and go to Yosemite. We'd go to plays like Broadway and West End, learn how to play stupid Minecraft and not suck at it. <laughs> You'd be in like engagements where you were speaking really openly, honestly, letting people see your frustration, your excitement, there'd be more lightness and amusement, but I also heard from you, there would be less of lightness and amusement on top of something and more of the genuine, just lightness and amusement, because there would also be room for the sadness and the frustration. And you would be able to own your anger and accept it, have grace with it. And that would leave you feeling unafraid of yourself. Like you could trust yourself and just less hiding and more of you being experienced and seen. How does that all sit? It feels peaceful. Nice. Do you experience much peace these days? More than I probably have in the past. But the distinction which I pulled out of, of again one of your one of your videos or one of your podcasts was stimulation versus generation there's a lot of stimulation in my life uh -huh. so on a scale even, of God, nine out of ten probably is the amount of no i'm gonna ask how much peace do you experience in your life scale of one to ten one out of ten probably Got it. Well, I'm glad I didn't meet you before all of the stuff you have done. <laughs> Thanks for identifying that. So Dave, what we're going to start to like wind down. What is the sort of um, like, can you share just the journey we've been on, like where you've gone in this conversation? No right yeah. answer at all to this. Yeah. No, no. We 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 spoke before, and and you very kind of graciously said, "Is there anywhere you don't want to go?" And kind of in service of you and and service of me, more, probably more than anything, it was a case of no. Let let's see where it goes. Um. I know that I'm going to sleep well tonight, mm. with lots of lots of processing going on, and and. my my focus is not to go to a place of solution tonight that's that's just i don't i'm not going there just gonna let it sit and just do what it does mm. it's it's been in it's been very interesting going back and looking at at things and i'm smiling because <laughs> i'm smiling because the the things we talked about at the beginning probably were not the things which needed to be talked about at the end mm. but we needed to go there first and go on that journey yeah, there's um, no right place to start, right? Yeah, yeah. I can 
just the, the thing I can hear at the moment is peace. Mm. Beautiful, man. <laughs> um, Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Relative to where we started, do you feel more or less uh, like in your heart? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. I'm cool. here. Yeah. Um, so last question for me, like just formally, you know, in, in the coaching container, and then we'll kind of close that and wrap up. But like um, you mentioned, you're not going to solve tonight. Just going to let yourself be with all of this. That sounds beautiful. That's a great mm -hmm. practice. Any other things you see you might take from this conversation to put into practice so it doesn't just exist merely as a conversation, but becomes mm -hmm. something you're living into? Taking peace from one out of 10 to a much greater number. And that's, that's not a problem to solve. That's, that's not a doing thing. That's a being thing as much as anything. Okay. Um, acceptance. Accept, so acceptance. how would you practice that? How would I practice the acceptance? Yeah. I love the concept. Great mm. word to put on a wall. Yeah. But yeah. What, how will you practice acceptance well, got, this week? I have space on the wall over there for it. So I will do that. Definitely. Okay. Um, I have a, I have a, a meditation and mindfulness practice and I'm doing currently a, a, a master's degree in that because that was something to, for me to focus on. And it's going to be part of that practice. What specifically are you going to take on? That's a very good question. And again, I don't have a, a, an exact answer for that. I think spending time, spending time with me, just being with me. No agenda. Is there, any, is there anything in particular that you want to spend time within yourself? There's something which has just popped into my head. Oh, wow. Um, there's, there's two places I need to go to spend time with me and spend time with them, and that's the, the graves of those two people. Okay. I need to go. I need to spend, I need to go and sit with them. Just doesn't, not for long. Don't have to be there for long. Just, just, just to be there. Okay. I don't know what that means, but do you, are you clear on what that looks like? Yeah. Like, could yeah. you sort of write that down on a piece of paper, come back in a week and be like, <clears throat> did I do this? Like, yeah. Is that clear to you? Yeah. Okay, great. While you're writing that, I'm just going to speak to our audience. Okay. Mm. So one of the things we've distinguished with Dave is his tendency to distract himself from being with the thing. So we already know that's going to be his ego's job is to get him doing stuff that like seems like it might be working or moving him towards it while actually not touching the thing, which is why my stand for him in this part of the conversation is for him to create some clear measurable actions that would have him practice being with what he touched in this conversation. Otherwise, it becomes well-meaning, almost like affirmations, you know, like I'm going to be more accepting of myself. That's great. But what does that mean in practice? And how do we even know? And when we have something that vague, what ends up happening is we're like, at the end of the week, we're like, did I be more accepting? Uh, and then it's just based entirely on our feelings. And what actually creates transformation is not merely having a conversation like this one, but then putting it into action living our life from that awareness and being specific about the actions we're going to take. So that's really where I'm standing for Dave in this is like, cool, go to the graves of the two people. Less important that I know what that means, but it's important that Dave is clear on what that means for him so that he actually can put it into practice. And so that he has something that calls him to touch what he will otherwise avoid touching. So Dave, hearing me say that, is there anything else that you see you'd like to put into practice this week? In this moment, I can't think of anything else, but Great. something something will appear. <clears throat> something Great. will appear. So I've got something for you. If, if you'd like, mm. you can add it to what you're already doing, but it's entirely Please. optional. So I notice that trying to sit 
and B with just what do I want drives up feelings of agoniz it's agonizing, disappointment, all of that. And then you run to get away from that. So I would invite you as part of your meditation each morning to sit with the question, what do I want? And then sit with whatever that brings up. So if it feels like a disappointment, sit with feeling like a disappointment. If it feels agonizing, sit in the agony. So simply be with whatever shows up, but be with it rather than like, oh, I feel disappointment. What does my disappointment mean? Now you're over here in a very fascinating intellectual conversation <laughs> rather than being in the feeling of being a disappointment. Does that feel like a practice that might serve you? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Great. There We're going to do there is Sorry, there is something else which has come from please. that as well. Yeah, let's um, hear it. Something else which you've, you've touched on as well when it was the, when you said hard to, I'm looking at my notes over here from previously, hard to be with someone as they struggle. And that feeling of going to a place of solving and <clears throat> as my coaching evolves, I know that there's been a tendency in the past to be that solver of problems. Mm -hmm. And actually how that needs to show up in my coaching is not to be the solver of problems, not for my yeah. client. And it'll become a lot easier not to solve their problems and let them be in their agonization and their disappointment when you can be with it in yourself. Yeah. We seek to fix out there what we are actively seeking to fix in here. This is the heartbreak of coaching. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Agony, disappointment, suffering are every bit as profound and sacred as joy, love, ecstasy, all of it. It's all sacred and profound. That's not necessarily a truth. That's a sort of a stand that I have and hold for all of us. So, we're going to do some debrief, but before we do, is there anything you need to say or, or anything left for this to feel complete for you, Dave? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, may I acknowledge you to finish up? Great. So Dave, I really acknowledge you for the joy that you are, the joy, the play, the delight. And... I really acknowledge you for the brilliance of creating a strategy to overcome this problem we'll call anger and probably some heartbreak and some letdown and using the tools you had. Which, so it's like if anger and joy and, and all those things are a problem, what do we do? We put joy on top of it. Be hilarious, be fun, be playful, be fascinated like a child would be fascinated. And I acknowledge you for the courage required to come to a deeper level and expression of joy, one that has room for anger and sadness and disappointment and heartbreak, just as much as it has room for love and delight and mirth and all of the amazing things of life. That takes a lot of courage and it is a path more easily unwalked. And I honor you for being a leader and a coach committed to his own work and to taking this stuff on so that your joy can exist in partnership with all of the parts of life, as opposed to in opposition to the parts of life that are there. Do you feel Thank acknowledged? You. <clears throat> Absolutely. Thank you. Good. Cool. Okay. Well, let's do a, a quick debrief and then we'll, we'll close out. So, um, we've got no questions from the audience. That's cool. That makes it easier for us. Anything you noticed, we're sort of like, oh, I thought we were like anything you wanted to share about that conversation that you noticed or saw or were present to. <laughs> I think, I don't think I feel, I could, I could feel the difference in my, in my state throughout that conversation. Mm. And if we'd have had this conversation two years ago, I wouldn't have felt that. Mm. That's, that's a big shift. Mm. Nice. Yeah. But just so there's so much in there. Just to spend just to spend time with and, and to go back and watch this again. 
that's and that <laughs> feels a little bit of resistance to that but the, the yeah going back and looking at that will be powerful because there'll yeah. be things which i've missed in the conversation now which i will pick up on them as well it'll be a good opportunity to be with yourself in your agony as you witness yourself trying to figure out what you want and then struggling and then jumping away from it as the witness, you'll get to be with that. So it's a great practice. Yeah. I, I noticed, um, I saw something that um, there was a moment where one of the people who's made a tremendous impact in my life, they were developing my leadership and they were like, Adam, um, I noticed you quote a lot of people. And I want to invite you to start bringing your own experience and wisdom and brilliance to the space. It's interesting, actually, as I created that breakthrough, which is a little bit of a longer story, I stopped reading. I stopped. I lost a lot of interest in personal development books because I was like, oh, the wisdom's here. This is where I want to do the work. I'm going to reach more for conversations with coaches and stuff rather than books that tell me. Anyhow. I was present to a lot of that with you, Dave, like a lot of like, oh, you know, Bernie Brown or this person or you, Adam, or whatever. And as that was happening, I could feel like my ego liking it, that you were quoting me. And then I could also feel like a deeper part of myself that was like, I want to know what Dave feels. I'm less interested in what Bernie Brown said. And it's all right that he's quoting her, but if he's going to quote her, I want to know why Dave is bringing that quote into the space. And so nothing you did was wrong, but I was really present. I was like, oh, wow, I can really see a lot of myself in, in that conversation. And it brought me, one of the things I was struck by was how much compassion I could have for myself and space like, oh, I really get what Adam was up to. And I can really get, you know, the opportunity that was available on the other side of that. And um, what I really got excited by was the idea of the world getting more of you, Dave which you kind of came around to at the end, right? You started to share that. I was just like, man, I would love to have more of, more of your sadness, more of your, your ferocity, but also more of your joy and, and all of that. And um, so it was a beautiful opportunity for me to just notice so much of myself and then to sort of see like, to have so much grace and compassion, or at least that's how I experienced myself with that as it was showing up. Anything you want to say to that? I feel like you've just given me permission. <laughs> I feel like you've just given me permission to to use my voice. And I thank well, you for that. I thank you for that. And then, yeah, obviously the conversation that we were having, you know, I've been thinking about this this week. And I said to you before, before we went live, there's this excitement and <laughs> worry and fear at the same time. Yes. Um, and I've been looking at more of your stuff because that's what I've been drawn to. And, and the such a lot has resonated. Mm. That that's what kind of sits in my head. And maybe the question for me is why does it resonate? And what are my thoughts upon that? Maybe that's me going to a solution place. Let's hold that for now. <laughs> well, I wasn't going there, but I often notice that we as humans, we rather than simply notice that something resonates or notice that we're sad or notice that we're angry, we get into why, why is this thing happening? Mm which removes us from the experience of being with our heart because your heart doesn't fucking care. It's like resonates <laughs> sad. That's the extent of it. Right. And you've, you've got three little or had at least at one point in time, three little children, you recognize they didn't. Why am I hungry? I'm hungry. Feed me now. And the beautiful thing is we become an adult. We can be responsible for that. Our heart and our head can mitigate, but like, then on the other side of that, there's coming back down to our heart and learning to just trust what it's feeling. Um, I just want to say, by all means, I'm thrilled that you feel as though I've given you permission to use your voice. And I really cannot wait for the moment when you give yourself permission to start using your voice, because that's the only person whose permission you really need. And I would love for you to practice trusting yourself as a gift, Dave, all of yourself. Cool. How do people find out about what, you, what are you up to in the world, Dave? What the fuck are you even doing? Well, and how do people find out about it? <clears throat> Easiest way, um, website, uh, davethecoach.co.uk. Um, there's all contact details on there. I have got a Facebook page and I'm happy say to be able to- Say it slower. Dave oh, the coach. Dave the coach. Dave yeah. the coach.co.uk. 
Why? Um, okay, this is a silly question. Why is it dot co dot uk? Why don't you guys just go dot uk? Uh, I don't know. That's a really okay. good question. I think it was just available. Somebody did try and sell me DaveTheCoach.com because there was a mm. Dave, Dave in the US who was a coach as well. And I went, no, I'm fine. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So Dave, DaveTheCoach.co.uk. Um, email hello at DaveTheCoach.co.uk. I'm not so good with my emails, um, but you can find me on, on Facebook. Um, cool. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what my, but my Facebook profile, come and find my personal one. I'm more than happy to, to connect with people on there. Um, and the usual places like Instagram. I am Dave James on Instagram and I do have a Twitter presence, but I do nothing with it. Yeah. Same. Is, is there anything you're like offering right now? Is it mostly one-on-one -on -one work you're doing with people? Yeah, it's mostly one-on-one. -on -one. Um, okay. my current focus is mindfulness. That's, cool. that's the area I'm, I'm really diving into now, which is why when you talked about the sitting with, with that stuff on meditation for me was, I got very excited um and i've just started a master's degree in mindfulness and compassion which i'm i'm really excited to 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 play around with that so that that's my main focus but yeah one on one work happy oh, to wow. look at group work and i I've, I've done some um group facilitation for the nhs recently as well which was which was fascinating um and and very 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 interesting to and and, and an interesting challenge to do it differently to how i've had it done to me in the past so yeah I'm, I'm i'm happy to play cool very cool um what will i share um the main thing i'm going to share right now is about the forge so the forge is the nine month program bay and i lead bay's my wife uh and our stand for the world is transformation so what we're really supporting people to do is to go through the transformational process that dave you witnessed be in today and we're supporting people to coach and lead from that place. So it's basically both sides of this conversation to support mastery in people's own lives so they can then support others and then to hone the skills to, to support people being masterfully, uh, masterful in their capacity to develop this in other people. And then finally, there's a whole leadership track where we develop people actually leading from this place, which is also fucking amazing and super cool. I'm not going to go too far into that. So if that is of interest to you, I'm just going to put a little, let's see, can I, does my keyboard thing work? Do I, I think I have to put TF space. Oh, there it is. I've got the thing down there. I just put it in the comment. So if that's something that's interesting to you, let us know. We start in September. We've already got about five people registered and there's usually around 12 spots total. We're not totally clear on that. We'll see what demand looks like. So they're filling up. Let us know if you'd like a conversation or if that's something you're interested in. Dave, I hope you have an amazing weekend. It's been a treat to get to know you and to spend time together. And for everyone, thanks for tuning in. Um, Carol, nice to see you. Andrew, good to see you. Thank you guys both for your comments. Um, and if you do nothing else this weekend, go and watch Voyage of the Rock Aliens and you will be astonished by it. <laughs> Bye everyone. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Uh,